Hello friends, welcome to BISP Solutions. Myself Ashwin and I work as a technical consultant at BISP Solutions. BISP Solutions is a tech company and provide technological solutions across the world. Now in this video, I am going to show you what is multi-layer perceptron. Now in my previous video of perceptron, I have shown you that what is perceptron. Basically, it's a neuron, neural network, right? Now multi-layer uh, multi-layer perceptron means multi-layer neural networks for example if you see one neural network creates one result now in this multi-layer perceptron there is one hidden layer below that there are multiple neural networks it is just like that suppose one neural network pro uh, produces one result right one prediction so what if we produce the result from multiple neural networks so that the def uh, the output will be more accurate that's what it is done here same thing is here there is a hidden layer in which multiple neural networks are there and then those neural networks produces output and based on those outputs one final output is generated that is called multi-layer perceptron output now if you see here the mlp multi-layer perceptron model consists of two hidden layers for the first hidden layer is 10 neurons and the second hidden layer has 5 neurons. We apply ReLU R -E -L -U activation to the hidden layers and sigmoid activation. We will see it in our upcoming video. In my next video, I will show you practically. Right. So sigmoid activation function. Now look at this. First, we will see the terms are used in this. So first is training loop. The model is trained for 1000 epochs as we discussed earlier. Epochs means repetition using binary cross entropy loss and stochastic gradient descent, right? With a learning rate of 0 0.01. Second is loss visualization. The loss is plotted over epochs, which helps visualize the training process and checks it, checks if it model is converging and then the decision boundary after training the decision boundary is visualized by plotting the prediction that means the plot is created or we can say the image is generated right the prediction image over a grid of points we use counter of counter of to show the boundary between two classes right as i have already shown you let me show you once again uh, look at this this is our normal perceptron right perceptron decision boundary here you can see that it's a straight line but in multi-layer perceptron it's not a straight line why the reason is that uh, for example when when the data is limited then uh, in in single neural network it divides the data into a single line but when your data is more complex in that case you can't bifurcate them with using only sim single line so we need to use multi-layer perceptron. That's the reason that multiple neural networks are used here. Now see what is multiple again loss over time. You should see a plot where the loss decreases over time as the model learns, right? As the model keeps on learning, the time reduces. Secondly, decision boundary. The If you see here again, the decision boundary, right? Here it is. Look at this. This is single layer uh, um, neural network right so what it is saying that the plot will show how the mlp classifies the data you will see two distinct regions for each class with the decision boundary separating them then the conclusion the example demonstrate how to build a simple multi-layer perceptron train it on this uh, synthetic database and visualize but both the loss curve and decision boundary right Okay, we can adjust the number of hidden layers, neurons and other hyper parameters, right? To experiment further with the model's performance. Now see here, key components. What are the key components? One is input layer. The input layer has two input features. The size of the data set X, meaning each data point has two values. Secondly, hidden layer. The first hidden layer has 10 neurons. Each neuron each neuron, uh, it's it's basically a 
perceptron. Each perceptron in this layer is connected to the two inputs. The second hidden layer contains five neurons. It takes 10 inputs from the first hidden layer. Both hidden layers use the RELU activation function, which is a common non-linearity that works well in many neural network architecture. I will show you this. Don't worry about that. I will explain you this in my upcoming video. Output layer and the another is output layer. The output layer has one neuron corresponding to binary classification task. Now the sigmoid activation function is applied to the output layer, which squashes the output value between 0 and 1. Representing the probability of the input belonging to classes. So, and here you can see the plot decision boundary functions visualize the data, uh, the decision boundary of a trained model, right? So the boundary function gives you that uh, trained model, right? Specifically for a multi-layer perceptron or other neural networks. So create a grid of point. The function first defines a mesh grid up. A mesh grid using NP, right? Then mesh grid that spans the range of input data slightly expanded by one unit on each side and better visualization. So in this way, while working on grids, you will get a trained visualization. And then the next is predict classes for the grid points, right? So the grid the grid of points is reshaped and converted into a PyTorch Python uh, PyTorch tensor. The model predicts the class of each point in the grid, and the output Z is reshaped because back to the same shape as the grid for plotting purposes. Okay, so guys, this is all about now plot the decision boundary. Again, we we are on the same page that plotting the decision boundary this is how we plot the decision boundary okay so now this was all about the multi-layer perceptron look look at this now how this graph is designed that i will explain you in the upcoming videos right till then you go through uh, till then you go through all these points what is neural network what is multi-layer neural networks all this right so that you will have a better understanding on it. And those who are new to this channel, please subscribe my channel so that you can get the notification of upcoming videos. And in our next session, we will see something else in depth, right? So thank you guys. Thanks for watching the video.